Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of my merch series. We are well underway designing a series of bespoke products that feature my illustrations and design. And if you are a small independent artist and want to create your own merch, you're in the right place. So far, we've created a sticker sheet, a tote bag and a custom mug. And today we're focusing on creating a minimalist pattern that will go on a silk paper, which I'll use to wrap all these items when ordered. So let's get into it. I decided that I want to work with a square format. So I'm going to create a custom set that I'm going to name Minimalist Pattern 01. I name my versions just to make sure I don't override any of my designs. Now for the size, I know my entire paper is 70 by 50 centimeters. So if I make a pattern that is 12 by 12, I know that it needs to repeat six times horizontally and four times vertically. This gives me a good idea of how big I want my elements to be. Now that our canvas is open, I create a pure white background and lock the layer so it does not move. The final paper has a white base, so of course this seems like a natural choice. Let's start adding our elements, shall we? Let's start off with a circle element that I often use in my designs. For that I am using the shape tool. And I want it to be in dusty pink, my go-to color. So I already know the hex code for this particular shade, and I'm saving it to my palette as well. Since this paper wraps my merch, it only makes sense that all these items follow the same aesthetics. Let's change the stroke width. Mm, okay, this looks pretty good. Then I add another circle, but this time the fill is on and the stroke is turned off, so it's inverted. And finally, I can just select these two and group them so they act as one single object. Okay, next I want to create a simple drop which I will draw with the pen tool. I tap, then I tap and drag at the bottom until I get this shape. And tap again up top. Easy! Here I'm creating another element. Make sure you hold down one finger to make a circle or a perfectly vertical line. Then duplicate. Then rotate and duplicate. It's again a shape that I use a lot in my designs. I get a lot of inspiration from symbolism and the occult, so it's no surprise that my next shape is a crystal. And I'm actually going to add a sketch for this. And now I'm just tapping with the pen tool in each corner to achieve these beautiful crystal shapes. Hmm, I think I'm going to mirror these two as I feel they will look better with my composition. Next, I want to draw a minimal crescent moon with two circles and a simple subtract operation. And we're done. Basically, I'm just adding a cluster of symbols and simple shapes to my canvas. And later, I am arranging them in a random pattern. Of course, you can have just one symbol that repeats itself. Or you can have even more than what I created. It is totally up to you. I personally like it when there is more variety, so I'll also add my eye design. Same as for the crystal, I'm bringing in a sketch and I just redraw it with the pen tool. Tap and drag where there is a curve. Tap and move for an angled corner. Here I'm using the line tool to quickly draw the eyelashes but only one half because we can just copy and flip them on the other side. The tear shapes I'm creating in the same way I did before with the single drop. Duplicate on the other side. As for the iris, I want to remove the upper part of the circle here. So I am adding two nodes with the node tool. And then I'm deleting the upper node. Alright, getting more and more complex. We're going to add a hand now. With the sketch in place, I'm going to show you the easiest way to vectorize this. 
We're going to use my trusty pencil tool at about 5% smoothness so you can see the difference it makes. For elements that are more elaborated, I like to just basically redraw them as I would on paper. It gives a little bit of a natural flow. The harder job here is adjusting the path after it's drawn. There might be some notes here and there that are not necessary. So I just go back and delete them. But when we've got a higher smoothness level, notice how I have way fewer notes to worry about. So let's continue with these settings and finish up the entire hand. Notice that I always adjust my path after I draw them. Okay, this is our progress so far. Off camera, I also added a little diamond and these tiny chevrons here. And now I'm just distributing my elements around. I'm honestly not arranging them in a precise order, but try to distribute them somewhat equally. I'm simply allowing them to breathe while also letting them just be wild like this. So now in order to see the full format of the printable area, which is going to be 70 by 50, as I previously mentioned, I will change the size of my artboard by adjusting the height and width. Now I'm going to select every layer, every element, including the background. Then I activate duplicate mode. And while holding one finger on the canvas, I move everything down. And let's repeat with both these areas together. To make my life easy, I'm just going to scale this a little bit until it fits the full format. And from here, with all my elements selected and duplicate turned on, I move them to the right. But now, I'd like to give even more randomness to my pattern, so I will move all my elements up, up until roughly the middle here. And then using a copy of the bottom square, I fill this empty space here. Let's duplicate the rest in bulk until the canvas is fully covered. And with that, I have a complete minimalist pattern. Now I can send this file to the printer and they will know what to do. I chose a sustainable printing company for this, as I try to do for all my projects. So let's see the results. Boom! Here it is. I really, really like how it turned out. It's a simple minimalist paper with a super soft dusty pink design. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed my process. Now that you know how to create a pattern, go crazy and make your own designs in Vectornator. Don't forget to follow me at Sandra Staub on Instagram and stay tuned for more tutorials like these. Till next time!